What is going on guys, David Productions 119 here today. I have a special video for you guys today. So this is part two of three of the Innova trilogy of my videos. So shout out to Innova Electronics for sending me out the 5610 unit to review. So today is a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be going over Repair Solutions 2 is their software service that they have developed and it is available in the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, and I have it downloaded on my Windows computer to update the tool. So today, the video, I'm going to be just going over that. So this is a pre-recorded clips of me kind of scrolling through the app. Um, I'm going to be looking at it real quick when I'm recording this video section right now. So hopefully, you guys kind of get what I'm saying. I'm going to be going to like uh, add a new couple different videos that I kind of did, just showing you guys how to like, connect the tool and everything. So it's pr pretty easy and straightforward to do. What I'm going to do is move to one of the sides. I forget which I'm going to move to. And then have the video clip. I'm, I think I'm going to move to this side right here. So we're going to put the video clip up here on the right, or to you guys will be the left. But um, let me open up the first video and kind of just show you guys what's going on. So i got to remember which one it is. Alright, so let me click the app open real quick for you guys. Repair Solutions 2. So basically all you do is literally just click connect the phone, make sure your Bluetooth's on to the tool, make sure the car's in the run position. So you guys can see it's updating, it's about to connect, it's about to pair with the car. Pretty simple to do. Um, just making sure that your tool is up to date as well before you start any of this so there's no bugs or anything. So let's get into it. It's still just waiting for that and you guys can see it's connected. So yeah, we're gonna be scanning the car's data right now real quick and see the data. It asked for the mileage, I'm at 146,000 miles I believe. 100. 104,000 miles, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that and still reading the data. I don't even know why I said 146. I'm not, my engine, or my car doesn't have that many miles in it. So it's almost done loading, did not speed any of this up. And yeah, it's done, as you guys can see. Um, I'm going through the app. So I'm gonna switch over to my other recording because I think I went more in depth. So let me cut this one off and let's go to the next one. So you guys can see there's the two reports that I kind of pulled up from my past. So here's the one I had no engine codes. And then this one I had one engine code. So you guys can see I had a multiple misfire, multiple cylinders. I don't know what's going on with that. Honestly, it just came up. I think it just popped up when I installed the Hellcat Airbox. So I kind of clicked on the part and it recommends me a part to purchase to try to fix. It says re replace the coils. So I really hope this is not the cam and the lifters problem. I, I hope it's not. You never know. It could either just be a random code or anything. My car's not ticking at all. You guys can see like here's an option to fix like a couple different possible causes. And yeah, manifold map sensor. You can purchase that part as well on Amazon. You can also pick like what affiliate you work with. Like if you bought your tool from Advanced Auto Parts or AutoZone, you can click that and it'll pop up advanced or AutoZone instead of Amazon. For me, I just clicked Amazon because they sent me the tool, so Amazon. Uh, so here's the freeze frame data. You guys can see when this code popped up. This is all the data that it recorded. So it's pretty interesting that it can tell you that as well. I just like how the parts pop up when like you want them to and they're the exact parts you need for your car to hopefully fix. So that's really cool as well. Next, you guys can see the monitors, the incomplete, the complete, and then the not supported. Obviously the misfire monitor is working and then a couple of the incomplete ones you guys can see. That's probably why I had the yellow light instead of the green one for the three lights to telling you whether it's going to be passing emissions or not. So this is a really cool section of the app. I'm going to go to the next part, kind of just clicking it. You can schedule repairs, which is really cool. This, I found this really interesting. Repair Pal, never heard of it before, but it's working with their app. You put in your zip code and it'll show you guys like a couple people around you. like couple service shops and everything that'll help you with your problem. <clears throat> so live data didn't really record any of that. You guys can see I didn't connect to the car because I'm in my house right now. So there's obviously a different section. There's, there's maintenance, which I clicked right here. A couple different options around the mileage and just suggestions based on other people. I don't have a diesel car, so I don't know why that popped up there. And as you guys can see at the bottom, you can still schedule service, which is very interesting as well. And next, predicted repairs, as I said before, it'll pop up kind of based on what other people have said and then also some fixes for the problems you might have on the mileage. 
Next is the recall section. There's dealer recalls. A couple of them here. I clicked on some of them to show you guys. It didn't pop up in a new window. It was like the same window as you guys can see. And you can share the document with other people if you wanted to. This is really cool. This is kind of like dealer info. Like you guys can see, you can share it as well. But um, yeah, next one is another recall. So next is the end, the safety recalls. So you guys can see there's a, a lot of them. Chrysler had a lot of recalls at this time. Uh, it'll show you whether they're complete or not. And then finally, this is a, kind of a cool section. You guys can see there's a couple different options like by each part of the car. Body, HVAC, some of them don't open because some of them there's no data there. But like fluid recalls, there's not really any fluid recalls. I just clicked on them and show you guys. Some of them don't work, some of them do. And then we'll scroll to body. Oops. And you guys can see there's a, there's a ton of them. So it's kind of cool. The TSBs, like service bulletins, it'll help you fix the car. So like if there's a couple ways how to do it, like a couple different ways, like it'll pop up. So this is the cool one uh, for launch control. I was telling you guys in another video, I think. It was an option for the 1314 SRCs. So it's really cool how there was a flash for that to reflash the car so you can get the launch control. I don't know if I can do it in my car, probably not because it's not an SRT, but I bet you if I set it as an SRT, it would work, but, and then here's the warranty info, obviously I don't have a warranty at all, so I don't really need that. And then you can get a service report, kind of like, like a Carfax for your car if you want to. I think it's like 10 bucks, here's a sample of one, kind of scroll through it. Um, it's really cool, this is very detailed. I was doing this when I was looking for my car originally, like when I first bought my car. Make sure you guys do that. It's definitely useful. I never tried this one out yet, but it's probably the same thing where it'll pop up whether there's been any accidents or records of any drunk or salvage. For me, salvage, it's all right. I had fixed it myself as well. But um, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna just keep looking through this real quick just to make sure. <clears throat> but it's just really cool because you guys can see like it's very detailed as a QR code. I'm betting you there's a certain feature where you can like keep this and save it as a PDF to your computer or something but that's cool as well and you guys can see at the bottom it's like how helpful was this app and this is my favorite part cost of ownership you can kind of calculate it yourself or you can use this it kind of like gives you an example so most of it's gas like half of it's gas and fuel obviously depending on where you live for me gas is around like four dollars for 93 450 some it used to be like 455 dollars crazy i know but you guys can just put your miles per gallon you usually get your amount of miles per year which for me is like 15,000 and then the amount of gas like uh, amount it costs per gallon and also your insurance I kind of just left it like that and there's an example 34k it's a lot of money for this one right here it looks like 60% is like fuel so that's crazy obviously I own a V8 so it makes sense but to some people it's kind of crazy I'm not really too concerned about that because I love my V8 but this app is very useful guys, as I said before, you can update your mileage so new features pop up like certain predicted repairs. I don't know why I clicked it twice, but um, this app is very useful and I just want to share it with you guys. So also there's a support option where you can click support if you need to help find your OBD port in your car or if you need to like warranty help or help with the scanner. Obviously there's support always available to make sure to check that out as well. There's nothing else really to talk about. That was basically the whole app. And you guys can see there's like a community thing you can click. Connectivity, I meant not community. So yeah, that's that. And before I end the video, I just want to show you guys a couple of my last thoughts before I go. Because this app has been very useful to me. And yeah, so how to connect. It shows you guys how to connect to the thing. A couple different options how to connect, which is very cool as well. And finally, I think I'm gonna click that. Yeah, so I'm gonna click the yellow icon, as you guys can see, there's the two reports, the yellow, and you can kind of filter out the reports. Obviously, when you're connected with the car, it's a little bit different, but very cool as well. Go into the report. I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by the emissions thing. It's not fully ready for the test. If you guys can see towards the bottom, it says one of the monitors might have not scanned. So that's probably what happened to me, is because like I think that my e my EVAP monitor didn't scan. I don't really care because I don't have emissions testing where I am. As of right now, so I'm not really too worried about that. But, anyways, guys, that is that. Uh, I mean, the clip, the kind of the voiceover slash um, screen recording. So, my opinions of the app the app is very useful, it has a lot of features. The cost of ownership is one of my favorite features, 
and also the fact that it'll show you the parts you need or you might need. It'll show a couple of predicted repairs for the problem that you're having and just really cool because you can update your mileage and it'll, it'll kind of change like what it'll show you depending on what other people have had problems with around the mileage. I like the TSBs that it pops up so if you guys are trying to fix a problem yourself you can kind of check those out like suppose like the launch control thing. I want to see if I can enable that with Alpha OBD eventually in the future. I'm not too worried about that because I can have all the drive but anyways guys let me know what you guys think down below. I'll leave the link for the product, the 5610 obviously. I'll leave a link to Nova's webpage. I'll leave a link to the Repair Solutions downloader. And make sure you guys stay tuned for part three of these uh, trilogy with Nova. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more of an interesting video. I'm gonna be scanning a couple different cars in the same video to show you guys a couple of the different features. Cause my car obviously is different than everyone else's. Like everyone's car is different. It's like a couple of the different monitors might not, might not, be, avail might not be available for me versus them so stay tuned for that again shout out to shane at anova for sending over the unit and also it's a very great unit i'm not paid for any of this so this is my honest opinion thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video and yeah stay tuned guys peace out